Skyfish or flying rods are what is used to refer to these objects captured on camera. They appear long with a corkscrew-like shape going down it and whiz by on footage. There are some people that believe that these objects are interdimensional beings or some other animal that we currently don't know too much about. And there are others that believe that these are artifacts uh, created by cameras when uh, bugs fly by. In my previous video about skyfish, I came down on the side of bugs and that these were artifacts created by the shutter speed of the camera. Some of you agreed with my conclusion, others not so much. And I've been trying to come up with a way to, you know, effectively demonstrate uh, to those who uh, are a bit more sceptical of my claim, how to, you know, show what I mean, like how are these artifacts of the shutter speed? I mean, yes, I can, uh, I can film it and I can show you the footage and I can say, well, I saw a bug. But I can't demonstrate that to you. Like, I can only really show you, you know, what, what the camera sees. Now, until the technology gets invented that I can take footage from my eyes, and upload it and show you, that's that's not really going to be uh, very convincing, is it? And the thing is, I may not be that lying to you or trying to mislead you, but again, you also can't analyse what I'm seeing. Is what I'm seeing correct? And if you are sceptical of my claim, you'd have no reason to believe me. And you know what? Fair enough. If it's not enough evidence to convince you, you know what? Fair enough. I haven't met the burden of proof. But I believe this experiment that I'm going to do today will satisfy that burden of proof. If you are watching this and you do believe that uh, flying rods or skyfish are currently unknown beings, or interdimensional beings, I hope you stay with me through this video. And probably let me know with some errors or flaws in my experiments. Let me know if you think I missed anything. For this experiment, I will be using two cameras i'll be having these side by side in parallel recording at the exact same time with almost the exact settings except for shutter speed now yeah i only have one on here but uh, i'm currently using the other one there to, to film me so just just imagine another camera here the creature of a skyfish is often thought to be a long rod with shapes we see on either side of them being their wings either two long wings that wave up and down, or several wings down the length of their body. But either way, the general consensus is that Skyfish's main body is a long rod shape. If you've seen my previous video, I explained that depending on the shutter speed, it can make small objects appear like a long streak due to motion blur. The slower the shutter speed, the longer the streak appears. We can vary the shutter speed of a camera to be almost anything we like, but whatever it's set to, we usually have a brief time in between the frames where movement will still occur. So when the exposure for the next frame starts, the object is moved on. So yeah, two cameras. Uh, one will have a slower shutter speed and one will have a faster shutter speed. Now with a slower shutter speed, I'm expecting to see the typical skyfish shape. Now with that, I'm going to later go and compare it to the one with the faster shutter speed, shooting the exact same thing at the exact same time. And if that camera registers a longer rod shape, then the object itself, I can conclude, will be, again, rod shaped. If the object is significantly shorter, I can conclude that the image in the first camera is an artifact due to shutter speed. So for these cameras, I'm going to be using a GH4 and a GH5. Not the same camera, but you know, made by the same people, similar settings, similar color profile. So you, you can expect similar results. Factors I'm going to keep the same. ISO will be set to 800. The frames per second will be at 25. I'll be using the 4K option on both cameras. The setup will also be locked off on a tripod to avoid motion blur for uh, camera movement being a factor. One little issue I ran into is that the 4K option for the GH4 slightly crops the sensor, which usually isn't an issue. You know, you just you know, work around it or reframe it or whatever, or that's even if you notice. But with this, I want the field of view of both cameras to be the, the exact same. Reason being is if one is significantly wider than the other, I can't fairly compare both the footage together. So what I did, I went to a brick wall and I set up the GH5 and used some tape in order to measure the field of view. And with the GH4, I adjusted the zoom on the lens to compensate for that. So that should very approximately work out to be pretty much the same field of view. And like I say, shutter speed is the variable that I'm going to be changing. So 
for the GH5, I'm going to be setting it to 1 400th of a second, and the GH4 will be set to 1 25th. That means a 16 times difference in exposure. So in order to keep exposure the same, I'm going to be adjusting the aperture. For the GH5 being set to 1 400th of a second, I'm going to be setting the aperture to f2 and the GH4 will be set to f8. To avoid differences in depth of field being an issue, I'm going to be setting the focus to the well, pretty much the exact same point. Now the reason why I set the slower shutter to 125th of a second is because at my frame rate of 25 frames a second, that's the slowest I can go. That also means the shutter is open for the entire duration of that frame, as opposed to be usually open for half that time. That means with motion blur, the last point an object occupies on the frame will be the first location it will occupy in the next frame. But compared to the angle set to 1 400th of a second, the motion blur is a lot less exaggerated. All I had to do now was set up my light and wait. I felt like one of those people filming for a David Attenborough documentary. We had this elaborate setup and all they have to do is wait for the animals to show up. And if they don't, it's all gone to waste. It took a while, but insects did start to show an interest in my light. Some moths and some mayflies. With this moth that I saw, we can see how it moves. Its flight path, its wing beats, and as it flies, like I said before, we can see that the last position it occupies in one frame is the first position it occupies in the next. Even its wings are in the same position. One criticism I got from previous video uh, was that the images of skyfish that I captured look nothing like the, the typical skyfish. And you know what? You know, fair enough, fair enough. Like I, I said that these were moths, and moths tend to have like a, a larger wing to body ratio, and uh, typically skyfish have a uh, smaller wing to body ratios. Later we had what appeared to me as mayflies. Compared to moths, these produce a typical shape. We can see them was around. More importantly, just like with my phone light or that moth, its endpoint in one frame is the same as its start point in the next. And if we compare it to the faster shutter speed camera recording next to it, we see very little motion blur. We don't see the typical flying rod shape. It's almost a singular point. While we can see the individual barb-shaped wings on the slow shutter angle, we see only a few wings on the faster one. Looking at this, I don't see how these can be sky fishing the way that people have described them. So with that, I only really see three conclusions you can go to. Firstly, there is a deep flaw with my methodology. Like I said before, if you do think there is one, please, please let me know down below. Option two, I captured something that is not a fly, a moth, or anything like that, but it's also not a skyfish, something else completely. Or option three, what I've captured were these flies or moths or, you know, or, or other bugs like that, and uh, they have produced those shapes due to camera artifacting. And you know what, I have to go with option three personally, that uh, when I looked over, when I saw things on the cameras in front of me, I saw bugs. However, I can't really demonstrate that to you over the internet, because, you know, that's not how our eyes work. Like, I don't have anything really more than, you know, trust me bro, or something like that. So at the very minimum, I hope my experiment has shed a bit more light on the shape of these objects as opposed to the nature or origin of them. You know what, this is kind of an issue when it comes to a lot of skyfish videos on the internet. Typically, we do not see a lot in the way of camera settings. What's the type of camera? What shutter speed is it set to? Are the camera settings on auto, thus changing the shutter speed as the footage goes on, therefore changing the motion blur? With what I said before in mind, I would believe that this footage here has the shutter open for the whole duration of the frame like my footage was. I don't know for sure, but that would be my best guess. But yeah, there's this mist uh, cloud of uncertainty when it comes to the camera settings that uh, people are using to record these videos of uh, you know, skyfish and, and the like and we can only really know that if the creator of the video shares that with us because it's very difficult to determine that as a third party after the fact. So really I can't compare a lot of these videos fairly however in the efforts of transparency and clarity I have shared my camera settings with you in order to analyse my footage if you so wish and if you want to conduct your own experiments with similar setups and settings I would really encourage you to do so. And I'll admit, there are some flaws with my uh, experiments that I used uh, two different cameras, two different lenses. Ideally, I'd use two of the same camera and two of the same lenses. That being said, 1 25th of a second is the same regardless of what camera you use. So what do you think? Was this evidence convincing? Was there a flaw in my experiment? Please let me know down below. I'd really appreciate it. 
If you have any other thoughts to share, please again let me know down below. I hope you have a very good day, and if you like what you see, please subscribe, and we'll see you later.